and we have an official upset alert complete. Jasmine Paulini, a.k.a. Ciao Bela, a.k.a. Little Italy, defeats Elena Rabakina in three sets. And I told you, Coach would have his work cut out for him today. Stylistically, it's just a bad matchup. I'm not really sure what else to tell you guys. Jasmine's short center of gravity, her explosiveness, her ability to just get that forehand back so fast. It just presents Elena Rabakina with so many issues. Yes, guys, Elena Rabakina, I mentioned before the tournament started that of the big four, if you will, she's not going to make the semifinal. And I was very adamant about that. Um, not only did she, she had bad numerology, I'm just going to just break it down for you. But when we get a matchup like this, having watched Jasmine take on Rebecca and every of every one of their previous meetings, you can, you can see the stylistic issues that Jasmine presents and it's just it's it's one of those matchups where Elena has to adjust everything she's so great at, right? In order to return, I mean, Jasmine, she's like maybe five four on a good day. Okay, maybe five five. Elena Rabakina has to bend down. Just look at her return stance. She has to bend down a lot more than normal to be able to return these low balls, and it's it's a very uncomfortable matchup for Elena Rabakina. Add that in with the speed and explosiveness vertically where Elena Rabakina has worked on her net play, but it's not as good as Jasmine's, who's just an amazing singles and doubles player. And by the way, she's one of three superstars left in the draw, singles and doubles. Coco and Mira, the other two. At one point in this match, Jasmine had one nine out of 10 points. And she actually had the opportunity to end this match in the second set. She was up a break, the ninth service game serving for the match, but Elena Rabakina would step up. I mean, just look at her stance here. She looks uncomfortable. There's no way she could literally get an equilibrium on the racket and hit her forehand with full strength because of her position having to return so low. Just look at that. That looks uncomfortable. And Jasmine here having that short center of gravity, I just think she has the advantage on the deep balls from Rebecca because Rebecca now has to cover ground. And I say it all the time. She has long strides. She has a good reach, much like Mira, who's only 17. I like Mira's wingspan. Rebecca has a really good wingspan. But when these balls are so short, it turns into her having to use her athletic ability and slide into these shots. And it's just un I mean, look at that forehand. It's so fast and aggressive. And she hits her forehand so low. Rebecca can't get to these balls. There were so many winners in this match that Jasmine had. It's just it's like, whoa. And I love Elena Rebecca, but I have I've, I've been honest and consistent with my stance on Elena and I, I've it's it hasn't changed. She's been one of the worst defenders in the top ten. And you know, if you take a look at other players like Coco, if Coco's having a bad serving day, which she's had a lot the last several months, if she's having a bad forehand day, which a lot of the critics say she's had a lot the last several months. She can lean on her backhand, which I think is the best backhand on tour, along with, I like Emma Raducanu's backhand. That's just top notch. Okay, she can lean on her backhand. She can lean on her defense. She could lean on her two-way play. She could lean on her athletic ability, her speed. Coco has so many ways to beat you. She is for real, ladies and gentlemen, and I think the world might be starting to realize there's no way you leave Coco out of the big three because we're back in a serve is amazing, but there's so many holes that I think she has to improve. I do think she's an amazing talent, by the way, but there's a lot more things that she has to improve where she has a bad day. She can't make up for that defensively. Whereas Coco can, right? Now, this <laughs> Jasmine wins, guys. That's it. Jasmine upsets Elena Rabakina. And again, guys, I mean, did, did you see when um, 
Fellini took on Coco. I mean, go watch that match, you know. I, I think it says a lot. But Jasmine, I told you guys, look, take her to win a set as a 4-1 to one underdog. I mean, that it's just Jasmine, it's a bad matchup for Elena Rabakina. And I've seen it. I've seen every one of their matches. And it's a frustrating day for Rabakina. But in terms of consistency, we're now starting to see Jasmine blossom and propel herself in this category of being the best Italian player on tour right now. Without a doubt, I think she is. And she's having her best season. And I've been cheering for her for so long. And I'm telling you guys, I told you she would break through. And listen, guys, I got a funny clip here. I, I think it was maybe Cluj Napoca where she won a match. And the microphone was just so high. It was taller than her. They had to come over like, can you adjust the microphone? Like, it was so funny. She's talking into the mic, looking up at the microphone. Fix her microphone. She's a champion, ladies and gentlemen. She prevails and defeats Elena Rabakina in three sets. Look how short she is. She is an Italian warrior, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy for her. She deserves... Okay, they fixed her microphone. Unbelievable, guys. Jordan fist pump, all smiles. Now, me personally, I think she's going to be, and she would have been a better matchup for whoever wins, whether it's Mira or Sabalenka. Let's say it's Sabalenka. I think Polini, who we saw defeat Sabalenka at the Indian Wells again, she has Sarah Irani. <laughs> Have you guys seen Irani and Polini walking the tennis grounds? It's like two four foot eleven Italian warriors that mean business. <laughs> Unbelievable. Irani's in the building. How did Jasmine Polini do it? Listen, guys. 70% of her first serves, and Rebecca and I said she's going to have her 8 to 10 aces. Now, that first serve point percentage one, it dropped between the second and the third set when she failed to close it out. But 62% of her back in the second serve one, 41% of her first serves one, 16 opportunities to break the giant from Kazakhstan. Big drama match! And 48 unforced errors. Unbelievable. She's probably going to take on Sabalenka. I'm rooting for Mira. I want to see Mira get that last Olympic spot. I really do. I'm not going to count her out, guys. It might be the day of upsets. It's not upset Saturday, okay? Here it is Wednesday. But listen, guys. We have amazing action coming up. Coco and Iga. Can Coco finally beat Iga here in France? It's going to be interesting. Now, in terms of consistency, Coco's been very consistent at the slams, and I hope people start to realize how good she is. When it matters, the slams, she, she always shows up, and that's why I think it's a joke to not have her in the big three. And I think people, once and for all, if we can get that Coco, we're back in a rematch, I'm telling you guys, I've been very adamant and consistent with my stance on Coco facing Rabakina right now, I think it would be a nightmare matchup for Rabakina. There's no way she could defend all these balls that Coco would get back. It's about matchups. The reason why Iga can frustrate Coco is because not only does Iga have the power, but she's level with Coco. She's got the athletic ability. It's a bad matchup. Rabakina's amazing, but that height distance, you know, those long legs, it's, it will be a nightmare playing this version of Coco. Trust me, I've been consistent with that stance. And therefore, by default, the big three is what it is, especially when we're talking about when it matters, the grand slams, the big tournaments, the championship matches. Jasmine Polini advances, guys. Sari, Ronnie in the building. Congratulations, young lady. Ciao, Bela. We'll be back.